Okay, so for instance, uh, let's say we want to perform a test concerning an unknown parameter theta uh, where x sub i, we have a random sample x sub i from this distribution characterized by theta. Okay, so we've got this random sample, theta is some parameter in the, uh, you know, sort of governing the distribution of the random sample. So our null hypothesis uh, we might specify as theta being in some space, uh, capital theta naught, okay? And the alternative hypothesis we specify as theta being in some other parameter space, uh, capital theta sub a, where theta naught and theta a, capital theta naught and capital theta a are disjoint, okay? So you can't have overlap in the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis, yep. Yes, that's what that means. They're complementary. They're dis so, so H or sorry, uh, uh, theta naught and theta a being disjoint means that they're. They, oh, sorry. You mean sorry. You're you're absolutely right. You mean not just mutually exclusive, but also complementary. They may or they may not be. We'll actually see an example where they're not complementary. Typically, they will be complementary. So there's no chance of, of them being in any other, um, it's either or, there's no alternate hypothesis possible. We'll talk about this in, in the example I do. We'll, we'll sort of talk, I'm going to do an example where uh, each is a, uh, known as a simple hypothesis. There's one point associated with, with each uh, <coughs> hypothesis. And then we'll talk about, we'll sort of analyze that case because it's very simple to analyze. And then we'll talk about, well, what happens if actually the parameter is not one of those two values. So we'll get to that. But yeah, thanks for pointing that out. OK, um, a simple hypothesis, uh, as I just said, is one characterized by a single point. OK, so this sort of uh, uh, the um, where uh, theta naught lives is just uh, equal to one point. A composite hypothesis is one characterized by multiple points or a range of values, okay? Usual setup is that we have a simple null and we have a composite alternative. And again, the usual setup is that those are complementary. So they cover the entire parameter space. Doesn't have to be that way, but that's sort of the usual setup. Okay. So let's see just some examples, and I'll, I'll throw in a few more definitions as we go along. So let's suppose x sub i, uh, or iid normal mu sigma squared, where sigma squared is unknown. Or sorry, where sigma squared is known. And we're interested in testing whether mu is equal to 0. So we could set up the hypothesis test this way, where mu is equal to 0, uh, and the alternative is that mu is equal to 1. Okay, and in this case, the stuff at the top is the, um, are the maintained hypotheses. The stuff in the second line is uh, the testable hypothesis, or one of the testable hypotheses, I guess. And then the, the hypothesis that we're actually going to test is, is, in fact, the testable, the one labeled as the testable hypothesis. We're going to call that the null hypothesis and note that it is simple, and the alternative hypothesis is also simple. What happens if we have a hypothesis, um, the alternative hypothesis, which now becomes, you know, uh, complementary? So the the union between the null and the alternative covers the entire parameter space. Well, that's a t that's a very common setup. Um, Again, this is called the alternative hypothesis. In this case, it is a composite hypothesis, and we also call it a two-sided hypothesis. And that's basically because we're going to reject the null for evidence that uh, mu is greater than zero or evidence that mu is less than zero. Okay? And so we're basically rejecting the, the null on two sides. So it's called a two-sided hypothesis. What happens if we just consider the case where mu is greater than zero? That's our, our alternative. So we could, set up, we could set up a hypothesis test this way. Why would we want to do that? Well, maybe we have some kind of a theoretical reason to know that mu can't be negative, perhaps. Okay? 
that could, yes, exactly, that could go uh, um, up in the maintained hypotheses, that mu has to be uh, non-negative. Yeah. So again, this is the alternative hypothesis. Again, it's composite, but this time it's one-sided instead of being uh, two-sided. 